हरनीय मंत कुसलेन यंतं संतं पदं अभिसमिंच सत्को जोच सोजोच सुचो चंस मुदो अनतिमानी संतुन सकोच सुभरोच अम्प किंचोच सल्ल हुक Namo Buddhaya, a very good morning to Venerable and brothers and sisters in Dharma. My name is Pig Lan and I'm your MC this morning. Now on behalf of Mecca Lodge, I would like to welcome all of you for attending today's Uduwap Uya Bosata. Now this morning, we are very honored to have with us Venerable Naninda to be part of us, to be here grace this special occasion. Now let us all put our palms in Anjali and respectfully say sadhu three times to Venerable. One, two, three. Sadhu, 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 sadhu. sadhu. Now I'm sure many of us here would like to know more about Venerable Naninda. Now Venerable is a graduate in electrical engineering and computer science from Sydney University, Australia. Now he received higher ordination as a Bintu under Sadama Kamsi Siado in 2004. Now he had received serious contemplative training under Pa'al Siado in the Myanmar forest tradition. He has spent many years practicing in Myanmar, India, Nepal, and Germany. Now he finds that studying the original words of the Buddha according to the system of listening, contemplating, meditating has greatly enhanced his understanding and practice of the Dharma. Before becoming a monk, he had practiced under various Buddhist traditions and was achieved in and was active in the Buddhist Missionary Society Malaysia Youth Section. Currently, Bhante he is also the spiritual advisor of Buddhist Missionary Society Youth Section. Now, this morning, our Uduwap Kumun Upozata program is as follows. We we'll start off as an intro of Venerable, which I just did. And now, I'm going to brief you on the Upozata Day program. Later, we will have an opening speech by the chairman, the reading of five and eight precepts by Venerable in homage to the Triple Jam, Bhante to administer five and eight precepts, then followed by morning chant by Bhante with a short Dhamma talk and a self-meditation instruction by Bhante. Then devotees will self-practice on their own. And at section two, which is at 4 p.m. in the afternoon, Bhante will give us a Dhamma talk followed by Q&A and the title of the Dharma talk is Awareness of Dharma in Daily Drama. And again, a meditator will go back to self-practice. In session three, that is at 7.30 p.m., uh, Bhante will do a Upulsata chanting with guided meditation, followed by reading of meditation of merits, sharing of merits and departed relatives and blessings by Bhante, Q&A for Venerable, and we have our special Voices of Harmony by our participant. And finally, parting words by Dante and parting words by the chairman. And of course, our program will end by 10 p.m. tonight. Now, the significance of Uduwap Poya Oposaka. That today is a very special day. So what is the significance? Now, Uduwap Poya celebrates the arrival of Bodhi sapling brought by Arahan Bintuni Sanghamita Kari in Sri Lanka from the origin Bodhi tree where the Buddha gained enlightenment in Bogaya, India. Now the sapling was planted in 236 BCE by King Devanampiya Tisa 
in Anurag Dapura where it still grows today. Now known as Jaya Sri Mahabodhi, it is the most sacred and the oldest living human planted tree in the world. The Uduwak Koya Uposata also marks the Arahan Tanghamita Peri arrival in Sri Lanka, established the first Binkuni Sansana outside India. The Queen Anula of King Devanampiya Tisa was the first to be ordained, followed by thousands of ladies from all walks of life. The advent of Arahan Mahinda Tarot on Poson Goya Day, that is on the June Manukun, and Arahat Sanghamita Tari on the Udubak Koya Day, mark the establishment of Buddhism in Sri Lanka and to the rest of the world. Now, in this picture, you can see Binkuni Sanghamita Tari arriving in Sri Lanka. Now, Binkuni Sanghamita is actually the only daughter of King Asoka. So she arrived in 236 BCE with the Bodhi sampling from Bodh Gaya, India, followed by its planting as Jaya Sri Mahabodhi in Anuradhapura on the December full moon day of Uduwak. Now, according to the Mahavamsa, the great chronicle, post canonical text, King Devanampriya Tisa, with all pomps and glory, paying the highest respect and honor, wading into the sea to receive the Jaya Sri Mahabodhi assembly, which is respected and honored as the living Buddha, Gautama Buddha, as shown in this picture itself. Right, before we proceed, I would like to invite Brother Tisilin to do the opening speech. Brother Tisilin, can you do the opening speech now? Namo Buddhaya, Wandami Pante, Suki Hantu, Upasaka and Upasika. Welcome to Uduva Poya Upasata. We are very fortunate today to have Venerable Yaninda to lead and guide us to venerate this auspicious day with Dana, Sila and Bhavana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu to Pante. Uduva Poya is the last Upasata for this year, 2021. This is the 11th Upasata initiated by the present Exco since taking over in July. The Kings invited six venerables to guide and lead us to live a virtuous Buddhist life. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu to all the venerables. Brothers and sisters, we have Q&A session in both session two and session three later in the day. Please do ask as many questions as possible for the benefit of all participants to learn the Dharma. Lastly, we invite all to come forward to say a few kind and pleasant words in the Voices of Harmony session tonight. Metalodge also invite all to join the nine attributes of Buddha Dharma study group to learn the nine attributes and be inspired by the Buddha. This is Meta Lodge pilot project supported by Apamada Vihari Meditation Center and Sayale Susila. Chant the nine attributes with wisdom. Learn Buddha Nusati meditation. Thank you. And let us play our part to end this year with a very successful and insightful Uposata for all. Anumo Dana, Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. I hand over to the MC. Thank you, Brother Tisilin. Right. So now, without further ado, I would like to invite Venerable to do the briefing on five and eight precepts. Venerable, over to you now. Okay. The uh, five precepts is very simple, as in, it's not a commandment. Please uh, remember this. It's actually a training rule, okay, for us to train ourselves. And there's no one to punish us, but it's a very good foundation. 
the precepts are very good foundation for us for our later practice. So five precepts, very simple. We abstain from killing, abstain killing for all, all, all beings, okay? Abstain from stealing, abstain from uh, sexual misconduct, abstain from stealing, and abstain from taking intoxicants, okay? So these five precepts are the foundations, very uh, important. The next one is eight precepts. Normally, in most of the Buddhist country, in Oposatha, they will go to either monastery or temples to take the eight precepts. And in the, during the Buddha's time, um, the biggest donor for the Buddha, biggest supporter, Ananda Pindika, his whole family and also all his workers takes eight precepts on Uposatha day. And many, many uh, devotees of the Buddha also take eight precepts on Uposatha day. So eight precepts, slight changes to the five precepts. The third precepts change to abstinence from all, all forms of sexual activity. And then you add um, three more precepts. One is no meals after noon. Uh, af actually, after noon means after the sun is above our head. Okay, it's uh, different from different countries because during Buddha's time, there's no, no watch. So they look at the sun. So very simple, Buddha laid the rules. When the sun is above your head, after that, when you go past this, uh, you don't eat. Okay, don't eat means no, no solid food. Uh, you can take water and there are certain tonic that Buddha allowed, like uh, fruit juice without the pulp, honey, sugar, water, few, few things that's uh, allowed. Uh, in Malaysia, it's slightly different. Many people are not aware because, uh, because of the change of time by Tun Mahathir last time. This is one thing that you know, he helps benefit us. Is the the uh, sun is above our head only in Malaysia. It passes that noon at one around 1.15. It varies throughout the year, but around 1.15. So in Malaysia, actually, uh, those who take eight precepts, and including the monks and nuns, they can actually eat until uh, about one to one fifteen. But most most monks they they stop at twelve just in case so that they get used to it. But in Malaysia, it's all right to eat until one. So another the other two precepts is um, one is no no using perfume, jewelries, and so on, and also no listening to uh, music, dancing, and all that. People might ask, what, what's wrong with it? There's nothing wrong with music and so on. It's just that during Uposatha day, normally uh, the, the devotees, Buddhists, will also try to meditate. When you meditate in a monastery, it's easier to calm your mind down if you are not distracted by music and so on. When usually it's quite easy to be distracted by um, loud music and so on. So, it's nothing wrong with the music. It's just that easier for us to calm the mind down. And one more of the eight precepts is not sitting uh, or sleeping on high luxurious bed. So that is the uh, eight precepts. So it's uh, most in Buddhist country, it's very common for people to take eight precepts during Uposatha day and don't look down on small virtues like this it can bring a lot of uh, fruits in the future, even small virtues. Every sm things we do can have good, big result in the future. Only thing is, please remember in mind that do, taking all, doing all these virtues, including taking five eight precepts, the aim in the end is Nibbana. Okay? That, that taking the precepts is not the, the goal, not the end. This is the foundation with the aim of attaining or realization of Nibbana. Okay, I hand over back to the MC. Uh, right. Thank you, Venerable. Right, now we'll pay homage to the Triple Gem and Bhante will administer the five and eight precepts. Uh, you want okay. Uh, Bante, I ask, like to ask permission from you to speak now. Okay, yeah. Right, brothers and sisters, 
please be muted. All the five books after, please join together with me. Okasang Ahang Bante, Saranina Saha, Pancho Samanang, Gatang Uposata, Silang Damang Yachami, Anugahang Kakwa Silang Deta, Me Bante, the TMP Okasang Ahang Bante, Saranina Saha, Pancha Samanang, Gatang Uposata, Silang, Damang Yachami, Anugahang Kakwa Silang Deta, Me Bante, the TMP Okasang Ahang Bante, Saranina Saha, Pancha Samana, Gatang Uposata, Silang, Damang Yachami, Anugahang Kat. Wa silang data me bante. Mr. Keng Keng, over to you. Kung kasa mi, o kasa ahang bante, ti sare ni na saha atanga samana gatang upo upo sa ta silang damang yachami ano gahang gatwa silang data me bante. Duti yampi o kasa ahang bante, ti sare ni na saha atanga samana gatang upo sata silang damang yachami. Anu gahang gatwa silang deta me bante. Tati yampi o kasa ahang bante, ti sare ni na saha atanga samana gatang upo sata silang damang yachami. Anu gahang gatwa silang deta me bante. Yes. Yamahang wadami tam wadeta. Ama bante. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. 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 Buddhang saranang gachami. Buddhang saranang gachami. Dhammang saranang gachami. Damang saranang gachami. Sanggang saranang gachami. Sanggang saranang gachami. Dutiampi budang saranang gachami. Dutiampi budang saranang gachami. Dutiampi damang saranang gachami. Dutiampi damang saranang gachami. Dutiampi sanggang saranang gachami. Dutiampi sanghang saranang gachami. Tatiampi budang saranang gachami. Tatiampi budang saranang gachami. Tatiampi damang saranang gachami. Tatiampi damang saranang gachami. Tatiampi sanggang saranang gachami. Tiampi sanggang saranang gachami. Saranang gamanang paripunang. Ama bante. Yamahang wadami tamwadeta. Ama bante. Panati pata weramani sika padam sama diami. Panati pata weramani sika padam sama diami. Adi na da na weramani sika padang samadiyami. Adi na da na weramani sika padang samadiyami. Kame su mi cha cha ra weramani sika padang samadiyami. Kame su mi cha cha ra weramani sika padang samadiyami. Musa wa da weramani sika padang samadiyami. Musa wada wiramani sika padang sama diami. Sura meraya maja pamadatana wiramani sika padang sama diami. Sura meraya maja pamadatana wiramani sika padang sama diami. 
sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Yamahang vadami tam vadeta. Ama bante. Anati pata veramani sikha padang samadhyami. Anati pata veramani sikha padang samadhyami. Adina dana veramani sikha padang samadhyami. Adina dana veramani sikha padang samadhyami. Abrahma charya veramani sikha padang samadhyami. Abrahma charya veramani sikha padang samadhyami. Musa wada veramani sikha padang samadhyami. Musa wada veramani sikha padang samadhyami. Sura Maraya Maja Pamadatana Veramani Sikha Padang Samadhyami. Sura Maraya Maja Pamadatana Veramani Sikha Padang Samadhyami. Vikala Bhojana Veramani Sikha Padang Samadhyami. Vikala Bhojana Veramani Sikha Padang Samadhyami. Naca Gita Wadita Wisuka Dasana Mala Ganda Vilepana Dharana Mandana Vibhusana Tana Veramani Sikha Padam Samadhyami. Naca Gita Wadita Wisuka Dasana Mala Ganda Vilepana Dharana Mandana Vibhusantana Veramani Sikha Padam Samadhyami. Ucha Sayana Maha Sayana Veramani Sikha Padang Samadhyami. Ucha Sayana Maha Sayana Veramani Sikha Padang Samadhyami. Isranina Saha Pancha Cha Atanga Cha Silam Damang Sadukang Surakitang Katu Apamadena Sampadeta. Amabate. Silena Sugatim Yanti, Silena Bojana Sampada, Silena Nibutim Yanti, Tasma Silam Wisodaye. Sadu, 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 sadu. Okay, we'll do the uh, offerings. This one, you can in your mind, when we chant the offerings of likes, in your mind, offer likes to the Buddha, to the Triple Gem, Buddha, Dharma and Sangha. We can chant together. Gana sarapadite na dipe na tamadang sina tiloka dipam sambudam pujayami tamunudam. Now offering a water again in your mind. Visualize the offering of water to the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha. Adiwase tu no bhante paniyam parikapitam Anukampang upadaya patigan hatu mutamam. Offering of perfume smoke. Again, in your mind, visualize the offerings of the fragrance of the Dharma to the whole world, to Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, and the whole world. Ganda sambhara yutena dupe naham sugandina pujaye pujaniyam tam puja bhajana mutamam. Offering of flowers. In your mind, again, visualize the offering of flowers to the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha and seeing the impermanent nature of the flowers, just like our body and our life. Vana ganda guno petam etam kusuma santatim pujayami munindasa siripada saroruhe pujemi buddham kusumena nena punyena metena jahotu mokam Upamilayati yata idame kayo tata yati vinasa bhavam. Now, paying respect to the pagoda, to the uh, place where we have all the relics of the Buddhas. This is a, tradi the, uh, a tradition since ancient time. So, in your mind, again, pay respect to the pagoda, to the chetia, which has the relics of the Buddha and Arahans of the past. Vandami chetiam sabam sabatane supati pitam saririka dhatu mahabodim buddha rupam sakalam sada. Now pay respect to the uh, Bodhi tree, 
And this is a very important tradition because during Buddha's time, there was no Buddha image. So when people come to the monastery and Buddha is not around, they will pay respect to the Bodhi tree, which represents the enlightenment of the Buddha and also the Buddha. Yasa mule nisino wa sabari vijayamaka pato sabanyu tam sata wande tam bodhi padapam ime ete maha bodhi lokana te na bujita aham pite namasami bodhi raja namatute. Okay, now we will recite the Karaniya Metta Sutta. This sutta is very significant because it basically lays down what a person needs to do, the prerequisite foundation, the, I think about 14 virtues a person must have before he embark on the practice of loving kindness and how through what you should do in doing loving kindness, how you should radiate metta to different directions and practice in a sense, the love you give unconditional like the mother to a son. And if you keep practicing, you will be able to reach up to the level of anagami. In the last words, it says that you will not be reborn in the womb anymore. Okay, we'll recite together. Karaniya mata kusalena yantam santam padam abhisamecha sako uju cha suju cha suvacho cha samudu anatimani santo sako cha subharo cha Apakicho chasala hukawuti, sandin rio chanipakocha, apagabo kulesu ananugido, nachakudam sama chare kinchi, yena vinyu pare upawa deum, sukino wa ke mino hontu, sabbe sata bhavantu sukitata, ye ke chipana bhutati, tasawa tawarawa anawasesa, Digahawa ye mahantawa mahjima rasa kanu katula titawa ye wa adita ye chadure wasanti avidure butawa sambawe siwa sambe sata bhavantu sukitata naparo param niku peta nati manita kata chinam kanchi biaro sanya patika sanya nyanya manya saduka micheya Mata yata niyam putam ayusa eka putta manurake evam pisapa buttesu mana sambhava ye aparimanam metancha sabalo kasmi mana sambhava ye aparimanam uddang adocha tiriyancha asambadham averang asapatam titam charam nisino wa sayano wa yavatasa vigatamito Etam satim aditeya brahma metam viharam idamahu ditincha anupagama silawa dasanena sampano kame su vineya gedam nahijatu gabaseyam punare titi etena sacha vasjena soti te hotu sabada etena sacha vasjena sabarogo vinasatu etena sacha vasjena now sharing of merits, think of all the devas, all the beings, all your family members, especially your departed family member relatives, all, all beings basically in your mind, think of them and share whatever merits that you have, hoping, wishing that each and every one of them will attain whatever success, whatever wish they have that will eventually also lead them towards awakening towards nibbana eta wata chamehi sampadang punya sampadang sabe dewa sabe buta sabe sata anumodantu sabe sampati sidia okay again share merits very important to all the devas to all the nagas all the different devas um, wishing that they will protect out the earth, protect the Dharma so that the Dharma can last long and protect ourselves and all other beings. Akasata chabumata deva naga mahidika punyang tam anumoditwa chiram rakantu loka sasanam. Akasata chabumata deva naga mahidika 
ุญญังตามอนุโมดิตวาจิรามรักขันตุเดสนามอาคาสตาชบุมาตาเดวานากามหิดิกาปุญญังตามอนุโมดิตวาจิรามรักขันตุมัมปารามตีเคยกิน especially now to think of all the departed family members relatives friends And whatever merits that we have done in the past, and including now of taking the precepts, we share with each and every one of these beings, hope, wishing that they will be able to attain whatever they wish for, whatever success, which will guide them in the end towards awakening towards nibbana. Ida me nyati nang ho tu sukita hon tu nyata yo. Ida me nyati nang ho tu sukita hon tu nyata yo. อิดามีนิยตินังโหตุสุกิตาฮอนตุนิยตายุ Now this uh, blessing for the world, of course, it's important the place we live in have all the everything go smoothly. เดวะวัสตุคาเลนะสัสสัมปติเหตุเจทิตุบาวาตุโลโกเจราจาบาวาตุดาหมิโก And aspirations is very important. If we don't have the aspiration for awakening for nibbana, you will never be able to realize the truth nibbana. So, aspiration, in fact, in some Buddhist tradition, is ninety percent of the path. So please make aspiration, and it's also very important because we have accumulated a lot of merits by observing the Bodhisattva. If you don't use aspiration to guide the merits, you would be born very powerful, very rich, but won't be. Practicing the Dharma but maybe destroying the world. So aspiration very important. Imina punya kame na mame bala samagamo satang samagamo ho tu yawa nibana patiya. I just want to explain. Uh, sorry, just now that part about being with the wise and not the foolish. The foolish doesn't mean that we we look down or discriminate against people. It means that people that we cannot help and they also cannot help us. So. But meantime, since we cannot help them and they cannot help us, we avoid them and we follow people that can we can help or they can help us until we become wiser. When we are awakened, then we can help everyone. Okay, next slide. Sorry. Now, asking forgiveness very important. If we have any mistakes in the past because of our remorse, it will keep blocking us in our practice. So, in our heart. We ask forgiveness from the Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, and also all all beings that we have caused harm to. Kaya na wacha chite na pamade na maya katam achayam kamame bande puri panya tata gata. Oh, three times, sorry. Kaya na wacha chite na pamade na maya katam achayam kamame bande puri panya tata gata. ขายนาวัชชิตเตนาปมาเดนามายากตัมอาชายามขมเมบันเตปุริปัญญาตัตถากตาสาดูสาดูสาดูที่บันเตสาดู right uh, brothers and sister now when the robber will give us a short dharma talk and also the self meditation instruction again over to you the robber So, okay, good. Yeah, so that you can see everyone. Um, first, for meditation, before we go into meditation proper, I would like to talk about the aim of meditation. Okay, so now in the whole world, actually meditation is very very popular. You can, uh, in fact, meditation app is billion dollar industry. There's a few app that the company. It's a billion-dollar company just selling, uh, subs- getting people to subscribe to their meditation app. So, <coughs> meditation has become the trend in the whole world. And in fact, there are places in I don't know whether they still do that in Aust- in America in California where if you can prove that you regularly meditate, your insurance premium is cheaper. So meditation has become the trend, the way, and not only that, it has a lot of uh, function because. In the last 10, 20 years, they have done a lot of uh, research on the benefits of meditation, and they can prove it scientifically. So it becomes more and more. Popular. I will mention some of the research, but 
before I go on, on that, I want to uh, stress that the Buddhist meditation is built on the foundation of dana sila bhavana. Okay, so dana Buddha always teaches new people starting with dana sila and then bhavana, which is the cultivation of the mind. So actually, meditation is not a, a very good word because the Buddhist bhavana is actually cultivation of the mind. And you don't just cultivate the mind by just sitting down in meditation hall. You cultivate the whole day and night as long as you're not sleeping. Okay? If you can, you cultivate when you're sleeping also. Um, so dana is important because it opens up our heart. If you can't give in whatever form, your heart is, is closed, then very hard to make the next step. Okay, but there's no rule that you have to do dana first, then only sila, then there's no such rule. You can start whichever. Of course, bhavana is, the, is very important because the cultivation of the mind. But naturally, if you have bhavana, you have the rest also. So dana will open up your heart and sila will avoid, to allow you to avoid remorse and build the foundation for bhavana. So bhavana is cultivation of mind, like I say. So a lot of people, in both the West and the East have misunderstanding about meditation. Okay? For the people in the East, including Malaysians, we think meditation is to concentrate the mind very hard, focus. And a lot of uh, Malaysians, Singaporeans, people from this side of the world, including myself, get headache when we meditate, which is impossible you know if you tell buddha that buddha will laugh you know where, where did my meditation cause your headache but it's a very common phenomena among malaysian singaporeans because um, we are too what do you call competitive we want to progress we want to quickly progress in our meditation and we try to concentrate so that that's not the aim of um, buddhist uh, meditation and i would like to also take this opportunity to give a new translation because I feel that normally we translate sama samadhi as right concentration and it gives the wrong idea. Okay, Concentration, the words is not a problem, but it gives us the idea that we have to concentrate very hard. So I think um, this Bhante Vimala Ramsi, who is based in US now, he, he, came, he was in Malaysia for a while last time, long time back. He translate samadhi as collectedness, collectedness of the mind. The mind is very collected. Yeah, that maybe is a better translation. And Bande Punyaji, who recently passed away, who was also in Malaysia for quite some time. Malaysia is quite, we are quite blessed to have you know, very famous uh, great monks. He translate, uh, instead of sam, sama, translate as right, because right gives you idea of right and wrong. He translated it as harmonious. So the mind is in harmonious and being equilibrium. He translates sama samani as equilibrium, either equilibrium or collected harmonious mind. So that is more the idea. Okay, I was saying that the East people have the wrong misconception thinking meditation is you know, concentration. The West also have misconception. They think meditation is to have peace, very happy, floating blissfulness there. That's a side benefit of meditation, but that's not the aim. The aim for meditation, very important, is for Nibbana. And you might ask, what's Nibbana? It's not something very, very difficult. Nibbana is basically to realize the reality of how life works. I will mention a lot more about it in the afternoon session. And it's very, very simple, but it's so simple that difficult for us to grasp. Okay, it's very simple that even a kid can understand, but our mind is too complicated. So anything that's in front of us, like our nose, we can't see, or our eyelids, we can't see. So I will go into that detail more. But I just want you to keep in mind that the aim of Buddhist meditation is recognizing or seeing or realization of how life works, the reality of life. How life works, that's all. It's like uh, how... The earth works is there's gravity. If you climb up a tall building, you walk off the edge, you will drop down. That's how you know, life works. If you put your hand on the fire, you'll get burned. Okay, so very simple. Kids know that. So similarly, I will talk more about that uh, in the afternoon. But now I'll talk about 
the side benefits of the uh, meditation. So at least if you are not aiming, I hope you are aiming to re realize the reality, but at least when you are not there, there's a lot of side benefits. Um, one of the side benefits is resilience of the mind. Your mind becomes easier to handle different um, problems in your daily life. And this is, has been done a lot of research by many people, especially Professor Richard Davidson. If you are interested in it, uh, you can either in YouTube or Google, you can find a lot of information about uh, Professor Richard Davidson. He has a Center for Healthy Mind in University of Wisconsin Medicine. Done a lot of research on long-time meditators, mainly Tibetan because he's uh, closer to Tibetan lineage. And he found that people who are, they go through, they test these meditators and also non-meditator, they will show them some horrific sights. And of course, suddenly the, the heart activity, the mind activity will change. But for meditators, immediately after those horrific sights is taken away from their eyesight, they will go back to normal immediately. Whereas non-meditators, that horrific sight will linger on in their mind. So it shows very clearly uh, for these people. And also uh, Professor Amisha Jail, both of these, you'll be surprised. I was very, um, how to say, uh, very happy and uh, very glad when I uh, listened to all these uh, different professors and all that talking about uh, health benefits of meditation because I realized that most of them are Buddhist and practicing Buddhists. Uh, Professor Richard Davidson has been a practicing Buddhist and meditators for like maybe 30, 40 years. So all these are long time and they know the Dharma probably as good as me. At one time I was listening to them talking about Dharma, probably their Dharma is deeper than me. So very glad about this. And uh, Professor Amisha Jao has uh, University of Miami done a lot of uh, testing on PTSD, the soldiers who come back with post-traumatic uh, uh, syndrome. Also, when, he, when she teach them mindfulness meditation alone, none of them has PTSD when they go to uh, war. So these are side benefits, okay? But our aim is not so that we have better mindfulness, we can shoot better. That, that's not our aim, okay? Our aim is to realize the truth. Now, um, Okay, we will go straight into meditation. Um, but I want to stress a, a point that the key, the essence of meditation is awareness. Okay, like now, are you aware that you are sitting down, that you are not running? Anyone that's not aware that they're sitting down, please put up their hand. They, they, they don't know that they are sitting down. If you are not aware that you are sitting down, you still have awareness. You are aware that you're not aware that you're sitting down. So your awareness is still there. Okay, so as long as you have awareness, you are in the sense meditating. Okay, now, are you aware that you're breathing? Anyone not aware that they're breathing can put up their hand. You don't know that you're breathing. Okay, no one. It means that you are aware that you're breathing. When you're aware that you're breathing, you are already meditating in that sense. Then you would say, Bhante, but I was breathing last time all the time. Then I was meditating all the time. No, at that time, you were not aware. Okay? Once you have awareness, you have start on the steps of meditating. And before I introduce you meditation object, one important thing is, like now, you are listening to me. Are you aware that you are listening to me? There's two parts. Yeah, you are listening to me, one part. You are aware that you're listening to me. That's two parts. Okay? Try to build this awareness in your daily life. When you're talking to people, you are talking to people, are you also aware that you're talking to people? When you're doing your work, are you also aware that you're doing your work? You won't be able to keep the awareness throughout the, the period. But as long as once in a while you're aware, I'm not interested in how long you stay aware. I'm interested in how frequent. If you can do it only like one second, you're aware, but you can do it 100 times, it's better to be very aware for five minutes and not aware anymore for the rest of the month. That, that's no good. Frequency is important. Okay. When you can be aware, I call it stepping out from what you're doing, then you can become the actor 
and the audience at the same time. Then I will go in detail in the afternoon. Then you will realize that you are the producer, you are the director, you are the actor or actress, and the audience of your live movie. You are the everything, you know, one leg kick for the whole movie of your life, of your drama. Okay. Now we will do key thing. I want to keep stress that awareness is important. I will keep changing many different objects, but don't worry as long as you have awareness. So now sit in a very comfortable position. If you are sitting on a chair, try to have both your sole of the feet touching the ground, not, not uh, only the, the toes or the heels. Okay. But uh, on a side note is, this is only easier to us to meditate, okay? especially for beginners. If you are advanced, you can lie down to meditate, you can uh, whichever way. Okay? You don't have to sit straight and sit on the chair with certain position. Buddha never say you have to do this to meditate, but it's easier. Okay? So if you are sitting on the floor, then you put one leg in front of the other, that's easiest. Okay? No need. If you can, you can do full lotus or half lotus, but no need. This is, a, they call it the Burmese posture, one leg in front of the other. Okay, now, two important things um, is keep the back straight so that you're alert, but has to be very relaxed, very comfortable. Okay, very comfortable, very relaxed, but keep the back a little straight. The back straight will allow you to be alert. The relaxing the muscles of the bodies everywhere will allow you not to have tension. If you uh, can't relax the, the muscles of the body, it's okay. If you can accept, that's a form of relaxation. Totally relax the whole body. Feel like you have dropped off all burden from yourself. It's like when you have finished your exam or finish whatever assignment or work that you have to do in the office and you have this total relief <sighs> but you drop everything. Let go of all the memories of the past, plans for the future. You can choose to close the eyes or half close or open the eyes also is okay, no problem. Just be aware of whatever that's happening to you. We will start with the first object, the breath, which is easiest. Just aware of the breath going in, aware of the breath going out. Just know the breath going in, Know the breath going out. Do not control the breath. Just know as much as you can. Even a little is okay. Important is the awareness, not the breath. If your breath is too subtle and you can't feel it, then you can either stay at the last place where you are aware of the breath, or you can just aware of the calm and peaceful feeling in your heart and stay with that. Or you can just stay in awareness. You can do whichever that you are comfortable with, as long as your awareness is okay. If there are thoughts coming and going and you are not lost in it, it's okay. Don't worry. Everyone will have thoughts coming and going. If you are lost in thoughts, 
it's also okay because once you know that you're lost in thoughts, you are already out of it. Then continue with the breath. Just know as much as you can. Try to enjoy the breath, have fun with the breath. Try to explore the breath to know more about the breath. Okay, just stay in awareness. Let go of your attention on the breath. Stay in awareness for a few seconds. Just aware of whatever is happening to you. Now we're going to do awareness of the four elements of water, fire, wind in the whole body. We'll go part by part to the different body. I will do something like the body scan method. Important thing again, if you're not aware of any characteristic of the part of body we go to, just pay your attention on that part of the body. Just put your awareness on that part of the body, aware of whatever sensations you can be aware of. So if you can't aware of the sensations that I mentioned, just any sensations, tingling, sharp, also okay. And also no need to label, Again, the important point is, are you aware of that part of the body? Okay, we will start with the uh, top of the head. 
put your attention on the top of your head and really feel that part of your head. Not, not think, but feel that top, top of your head. We'll start with the characteristic of the earth. Can you feel any hardness, softness, roughness, smoothness, heaviness, lightness, or the characteristic of water flowing or stickiness, especially of the sweat, or the heat or cold of the fire element, or the supporting or pushing of the wind element, which supports the head or push the head so that we can, the head can move. Move down to the face, aware of the softness of the cheeks, you can try the uh, flowing or the cohesiveness, the stickiness of tears in your eyes. If you can, if you can feel the cohesiveness or stickiness or flowing of the saliva in your mouth, of the liquid in the nose, fluid in the nose, the hardness of the bones in the face, the smoothness of the face, the heat or cold of the whole face, and the pushing or the supporting of the face, or any sensations you can feel on the face, tinkling, sharp sensations, no need to label, just aware of whatever sensations. If you can't name, it's okay. Back of the head. Again, any sensations from the back of the head. Hardness, stickiness, heat, cold, supporting, pushing, softness. And move down to the neck. Any sensations in the neck? Even sharp tingling sensation is okay. As long as you're aware, then your mind is in the here, in the now. Any heat, cold, stickiness, hardness. From the neck, we go to the shoulders. Any sensation on the shoulders, hot, cold. Smooth stance, smooth sensation, rough, flowing, stickiness, flowing maybe the blood inside the body. Move 
move down to the arms, all the way to the elbow. Lightness, heaviness, cold, hot, supporting, pushing, stickiness or flowing. The rest of the hands all the way to the wrist, to the fingers. Any sensation, maybe especially the lightness of the fingers. Heat, cold. Hardness, softness. Back to the chest area. Any sensations on the chest area? Soft heart sensation. Rough, smooth, or just sharp or tingling sensation. Any sensations at all? Just aware, no need to label. Important is the awareness. From the chest, we move down to the abdomen. Any sensations in the abdomen? Soft, hard, smooth, rough, heavy, light, flowing, cohesion, stickiness, hot, cold, supporting, pushing, any sensations? From the abdomen, we move to the back of the body. Any sensations at the back of the body? For some people, maybe hardness. Or soft, also some other people. Hot, cold, any sensations? from the back of the body down to the buttock, maybe the heaviness of the body on the buttock, or the smoothness, or the cohesiveness or stickiness of the sweat, or hot, cold,
next move to the ties, both ties of the legs. Heaviness, lightness. Hot, cold. Any sensations. from the thighs to the knees, both the knees, hardness, softness, roughness, smoothness, or sharp tingling sensations. Now next, go down to the shin, all the way to the ankle and the legs, the toes and the uh, sole of the feet. Just aware of any sensations that you have. Hardness, roughness, softness, smoothness, heaviness, lightness, flowing, cohesive, which is stickiness, heat, cold, supporting, pushing, any other sensations that you can feel for the rest of part of the leg. Okay, just aware of the body as a whole, any sensations of the body as a whole. Now we move to the third object of meditation. Just aware of any sound that you hear. Okay. Just aware of any sound that you hear. Just be with the sound. Continue to be aware of any background sound that you have.
can just aware of your body. If you can be aware of the body, can slow those who have closed your eyes can slowly open your eyes. Okay, any questions first before we uh, go on? There is uh, one or two other objects I want to introduce to you all, but before we go on, I just want to see any questions you have. While waiting for the questions, uh, I want to do a, a poll question. I will ask you a question first. Okay, the question is very simple. We did three types of meditation. Uh, where's Rachel? You are ready for the poll questions, okay? Uh, Rachel? Yes, Bante. Oh, okay. Okay, so basically, uh, the poll question will be one, two, three only, okay? So one is breath. If you think you like breath meditation, you prefer breath meditation, then you take one. If you prefer the body type of meditation, you take two. If you prefer the sound meditation, you take three. So we have three options, one, two, three. One, breath, two, body. Three, the sound. Can we have the poll question? Uh, no, not in WeChat. Not in, sorry, not in the chat group. The, we will have a, a poll question for you to take. Uh, no, can you have the one, two, three? This one is a yes or no. Bante, they are answering on one, two, three already. Can we try the one or two or three? Uh, Bante, oh, I launched the one, two, three and they are sorry, answering. My, my, uh, my speaker not working. Now it's working. Yeah, sorry, Richard. Yeah, Bante, they are answering already on the one, two, and three. Oh, oh I can't answer. see on my side. I only see the yes and no. Uh, that was the earlier. Uh, okay, may I just say, because even the answer, the one, two, three, um, you won't be able to see the sequence how we take. Because one is breath, two, three, we have to choose one or we have to no, um, you just choose one. Choose one. Just choose one choose only. Two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Choose one or two okay. or three. How to answer? I don't know how to answer. The screen came on. Just click on it. Do you see yeah, the just screen? Click on it. Very easy. No tick. No tick. But there's no poll no and no right. tick. No tick. Yeah, I didn't see the poll. That's huh? right. There's no tick. Mine have. No. I saw. No, that's why we oh. cut. I only see the result. The co-host won't be able to see. Oh. No wonder. Yeah, yeah. Co-host won't be able to. Sorry. Co-host won't. The rest should be able to see. But I didn't see. Uh, but co I can co-host and also brother and sister they signed in by Meta Lodge Gmail. Also, oh, we're not also. able to see. Yeah. Oh, so there's not much people. Okay, never mind. We can just uh, raise hand, then easier. Never mind. Forget about the poll question. Since everyone is on the camera on, those who who feel that the uh, breath is good is uh, easier for them. Okay, Bante, I have total twenty five answer already. Shall I launch the result? Oh, okay, okay, you can launch the result. Yeah. Okay, so I can put down your hands. Yeah, yeah. Because if she has the. Can everyone see the result? No, I don't know. Uh. Is it because. Yes, I think I'm... Sister Joanne can see. Brother oh, May and some... Brother, Steve, uh, Bre Brother Steven, Sister May from New Zealand oh. can see. Very oh, only some can... people no. can see only. Uh. Okay, never mind. I okay, think you no. have to tap on post at the bottom there. Yeah, yeah please go to the bottom. Okay, okay. Okay, never mind. I do, I do. Yeah, you will leave this. Okay, I just want to the reason we do the poll question is to show you that certain people are uh, used easier, they might be better at sound, like you know, to them they, they function by hearing things. Then sound uh, might be sorry, different. sorry, Bante. May yeah. I just read out to you so that yeah. you know. Breath okay. uh, is sixty-eight percent. Okay. Body is sixteen percent. Okay. Sound is twenty percent. 
Okay, good. Okay, okay. Okay, thanks. So quite a lot uh, feel easier to do breath meditation. Okay. Um, but there are a lot of people who struggle with breath meditation also. We, we don't need the, the, the slide now. Um, so, okay, different people will have different, uh, easier to to different type of object, but different time also will be easier, different object, okay? Sometimes uh, we keep doing breath, we might get bored with breath. After like 10 days, you know, 10, 10 days of breath, you say, oh, no more breath again. And then you have no mood to meditate. Then you can change to sound or body. Same, if you do sound for like, you know, 20 days, you say, oh no, not again, the sound, you know, I'm fed up. So then you can change. So the important thing is the awareness, okay? The object not so important, but sound meditation has a, uh, it's new to me because I never do sound meditation before, uh, but I've shared it with quite a few people. It helps us to be able to more accepting all different types of sound. After I start practicing sound meditation now, even though if the neighbor is cutting grass, yeah, or someone is uh, renovating, zzz, 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 I don't have that much reaction anymore because I'm used to just you know, be with whatever sound. So it has a, a, a very powerful, uh, powerful way for us to accept whatever that happens to us. This is very important, which I will talk more in the afternoon, but uh, one of the things that helps us in the resilience of mind is being able to accept whatever that happened to us. Accept doesn't mean we give up and, uh, no, and say, okay, I, I, I don't care. Accept means you are able to take whatever that's thrown to you. Then you can make the next move. Like we never try to change the weather. We accept whatever weather that, you know, the sky gives us. But then we will know what to do after that. But if you are the one who get very upset with, you know, the weather changes, then your life is ruined before it even started. So this has a powerful effect for the sound. For the body, it has a very powerful healing effect. If your mind is with the body, I call it your natural doctor is at home. Because now you are here and you will be able to easier to detect any sickness in your body. And if you have already have any sickness, easier for it to heal because your, your energy is here, not dissipated everywhere. So it has a side effect of healing and self-diagnosis. So uh, very useful. Um, breath, of course, it, it will help you to calm down. And this is a Buddha's prescription for if your mind is very distracted, do breath meditation. Okay, next what we want to do, this one is also uh, quite new to me and maybe new to all of you all, is uh, what's called, okay, Serene, you have a question? You raise your hand. Uh, yes, good morning, Bante. Yeah. Uh, I have a question about the body. Yeah. Um, uh, so when 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 you when we do the guided meditation that you mentioned, you know, um, uh, the way you do it is like start from the head and then. Uh, okay, you don't have to start from the head. You can start anywhere that you want, as long as you're aware. Yeah. So then you go through the four elements, right? Yeah. Like, you don't yeah. have to go through four elements also. I, I use the four elements because I combine two types of meditation, but you, you don't have to also. You can do just aware of whatever sensations that come in your head. Yeah, so I have a question about the flowing, you know, um, and the cohesive. Okay. It's, it's more of an imagination, right? Because... No, you have to try to feel. If you can't, it's okay. It's yeah, the, the imagination, like for example, the cohesiveness, which is the you can call it stickiness of the sweat, you, you can feel. Uh, yeah, but how about the blood? Uh, blood may be a bit difficult for some people, they can feel, but not, not all. You are, you are right, that one is a bit difficult, then maybe you skip it. Do the easy one that you can really feel. Yeah, because I think that it's going to the imagination, you know. Uh, try not to go to the imagination. There are other, uh, other type of uh, meditation where we will use the mind to really in the mind to, to feel, but this one try to feel using the body. Okay, then there, there's only certain element can be felt, I think. Uh, it's me. okay, no problem, yeah. because I'm not really doing a full-on uh, four elements meditation. 
if you are doing really four elements meditation, then you have to feel all the elements. I'm just yeah. trying to, to more on awareness of the body, but uh, also introduce you to the four element at the same time. Yeah, I have done many, uh, I mean, different, different, uh, different guided meditation on the four elements. So, oh, okay. yeah, uh, uh, so I'm aware of that. And, and okay. my second question is about the, the breathing. Yeah. Uh, because some, some uh, meditation teacher will say, uh, just focus on the breath at the nostril. Yep. And uh, don't, don't go to the abdomen, uh, you know, don't go to the chest. So what is the right way? Then? Okay, good question. Okay. Um, this is for everyone, not just for you. Whichever teacher you follow, you have to please stick to the instruction of the teacher. Okay. This is my only personal opinion is that, let's say this is a mountain. This is the, our target on top. Every teacher will climb the mountain from different angles. And they are familiar with the angle and they will say, please, only this angle because they know the angle 100%. So if you follow that teacher, please follow his angle. So there are some teacher, if you follow Mahasi, definitely you have to do the abdomen. Okay, no other way. If you follow Power Sido, which I have been there for many years and follow uh, his teachings, you have to follow exactly at the nostril, the outside is here. So it depends on which teacher you follow. But for me, my personal viewpoint is whichever that can allow you to have awareness, it doesn't really matter in that sense. But of course, Bao Sider will say um, nowhere in the text it mentioned about the abdomen. Okay, but by my own self-experimenting, I realized that yes, there's no place that mentioned about abdomen. But if you put your attention on the abdomen instead of here, it has benefits for people like Malaysians and Singaporeans and uh, I call it foreigners who are not Burmese because we are so stressed when you try to follow watch here, our mind will be like this, you know, but if you put on the abdomen, your mind, your brain won't be like, like that. So it has its benefit. Yes, I find the abdomen is easier for me. Yeah, yeah, different people has different, but I have to warn you that if you stick with the abdomen, very difficult for you to change to here. So you, you can't switch to follow. If you want to suddenly learn under Pao Sayadol's, the, the methods that's uh, taught by Pao Sayadol, then very difficult for you. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's the only uh, disadvantage you, you have. Okay. So, uh, so Bante, uh, uh, what you mean is that we should try different ways? Uh, depends on character, okay? For some people, when they try different ways, they totally collapse as in they get lost because you know, you know this one, this one, they get lost. For me, I can. I, I don't find contradiction between even Vajrayana, Mahayana, Theravada, there's no contradiction. Of course, it looks contradictory in the surface, but I can see there are similarities behind the surface, so I have no problem. But if you have problem, then don't do that. Don't learn different types if you have problem. Okay, so if you have no problems, okay. As, as long, long as, as you have no problems, uh, you get the wet. I mean, uh, which the method that give you the uh, best in terms of awareness. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Bunty. Okay. Any other questions? We might not go. We might only go one more. Okay. Maybe we can do the meditation more in the uh, afternoon. We will see how it goes. Any more questions? Okay. Never mind. I will do the. We can do questions later. So. We will do the next meditation that I like very shortly. Okay. We will maybe we might run over time a little bit. Next one, very simple. Okay. We will only do very short, very simple is just aware of whatever thoughts that come to you. I call it thought meditation. Okay. Normally, when we see thoughts, we don't want. Okay. Now I want to use you to use thought as an object. That means any thought that arises, you are aware of it. But three things you got to remember. You cannot stay at the thought very long so that you're lost in the story. So you have to be very quick. Aware, and then next thought. Quick, aware, next thought. And aware many thoughts, not one. Don't pause in one thought. Okay? Any quick question before we do? Very simple. Okay? Okay, so now just sit, relax posture. But keep the back straight, just aware of any thoughts that come.
just aware and then stay in awareness. If there are no thoughts, good, just stay in awareness. Okay, just feel your body. Can feel your body can slowly open your eyes. Now, when you're doing normal meditation, whatever objects you have just now, if you have too many thoughts, you can try to use this. Instead of chasing the thoughts away, you use now thought as your object. And uh, because of time, I, I wouldn't ask you all feedback, but for some people, you have three, three results when you use thoughts as object. For some people, when they use thoughts as object, suddenly there's no more thoughts. Thoughts, which is something which is bothersome, suddenly no more thoughts, and you find it, now, what, where is my object? Oh, it's okay, okay? Those people who reach this stage, very good. Okay, you don't have problem with thoughts anymore. So just stay in awareness. For those people who, when they watch the thoughts, thoughts continue coming, very good. You have thoughts as an object. You know, your object didn't disappear. So you can continue with the thoughts. For those people who have more thoughts coming, don't worry. It's because, not because you are getting worse. It's because last time you're not aware of those thoughts. Now when you're aware, you will be able to see more. So more thoughts come. So very good also. So this is a meditation I call win-win. You buy big, you will win. You buy small, you will win. You always win. So um, you can try using this as an object or when you're doing other meditation and you have too many thoughts, you can use this object. Uh, SK Lim, you have a question? Sorry. Uh, yes, uh, Bante. Good morning, Bante. Yeah, yeah. Uh, good okay. afternoon here in yeah. uh, Australia. Um, yeah, um, I'm very happy that Bante mentioned about looking at thoughts. Um, I did in one of the Uposata sec, uh, section here, uh, asked about uh, before uh, that sometime when I started my meditation, I actually was wa watching my thoughts all the time. And, uh, and that becomes like, you know, I just allow it to for the 10, 15 minutes, just watch the thoughts, you know, and, and actually finally after 10, 15 minutes, it sort of die off. And then only then um, uh, I'm able to you know uh, be calm and then start watching my breath and have a better so-called better meditation uh, uh, session. So uh, in, in that sense, are you talking about this uh, watching the thoughts here? Yeah, but uh, not not just for you. The answer, this answer that I'm going to say is for everyone that if you have the intention that I watch the thoughts to get rid of the thoughts, it won't work. Okay, you must have the intention that I will watch the thought as an object, like I watch breath as an object. Then it will have the result like what SK Lim has, that suddenly no more thoughts. But if it didn't get this result, it's also okay because you can continue use thoughts as an object. Okay. But this is a very unconventional uh, meditation technique. I don't think any Theravadan uh, uses it, but you can try it. Okay. Okay, SK Lim. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, okay, we are out of time, but I still want to do one more meditation. Okay, so, so the, for those who are, what do you call? We, we don't have a, when we end, we just end. Do we have a, like, a, I don't know, chanting or whatever? No. Uh, okay, 
So we might extend like five minutes. Those who want to leave, they can, they can leave if they have something to do. Okay, this one, meta, but a little bit uh, different. I, I want to introduce this, this uh, meta as in, just think of the feeling that you have in the past that you wish you can, that can last forever. It can be a peace, usually it's a peaceful, nice feeling, maybe on the beach or on the forest, but any feeling that the last time you feel and you wish that I could have this feeling forever. So easier if you close your eyes to feel that feeling. Don't get into the story, okay? Please don't get into the story, you'll get lost. Just capture that feeling that you have. The last time you have a feeling where you wish you could forever dwell in this feeling. Okay, just stay in this feeling. This is a natural part of us, this feeling, actually. Okay, in this feeling, which is natural, which is innate in us, wish yourself to be well, to be happy, to be healthy, to be strong. Okay, continue to wish all your people that you respect, you love, your family members, relatives, to also have this natural feeling in them, to be well, to be happy. May they rediscover this natural feeling in them. Again, in, enlarge your attention to all beings. Wish them also to rediscover this natural, peaceful, calm feeling in them and be well and happy. Okay, now come back to the feeling you have in your heart. Maintaining this feeling, slowly open your eyes. But maintain that feeling that you have. Look around you, but maintain this feeling in you. Okay, if you lose that feeling, close your eyes again and recall that feeling. Stay in that feeling for a few seconds or as long as it takes. Then open your eyes again and maintain that feeling. Okay, in the break, um, Try to stay, no, don't use effort, okay? Please, you know, don't make, use, you know, view effort. Be very natural. If you can, recall the feeling and then try to stay in the feeling while you're eating, while you're talking or whatever. If you can't, it's okay. It, it comes, uh, you have to come naturally, okay? So don't force yourself. And on your self-practice, uh, you can do awareness of the breath, awareness of the body, awareness of the sound. You can even do awareness of smell if you want, taste, um, any other uh, meditation that you are familiar with. But stay, try to uh, key thing, emphasize on the awareness. Okay? But if you have your own practice, go ahead. It's okay. Any practice, as long as it doesn't give you headache and stress, which means you are doing it wrong or makes you become zombie, then it's all wrong. You should be much lighter, happier, mind more flexible, more sharp, then you are correct. If after your meditation, you become more sluggish, more dull, uh, more, what do you call, grumpy, then you are all wrong. Okay, are you on? Hello? Bhante, uh, uh, I noticed that uh, for me, it's like uh, the main focus is always um, coming down with the breath first. 
And like you say, it's true because I tried to do the, the breath through this jaw. It didn't work because it was too subtle. And what happened when I went to the abdomen, it was clearer and it's easier to maintain the awareness on the abdomen. But after some time, because when I do meditation, I sit in a rather busy environment. It says I hear the cars, you know, uh, zooming in and out of the traffic because of where I am. And uh, what happened is that um, during the, the meditation, I noticed that um, you can even doubt the sounds that you hear because you realize that actually some of the sounds, you have certain perception that is the sound coming from the left to the right. But actually in reality, the sound is similar, but it can be coming from the right to the left. So that, that one is the kind of awareness uh, that I can derive from it. And I find it's useful because then you realize you can't, that sound is also a delusion in that sense. Um, but then I don't stick to that because sometimes I will move. Is it okay? That means I move from sound to sensation. Then from sensation, sometimes I move to, uh, because I notice certain abdomen uh, when I do the meditation, it will go a bit deep because it will be telling me um, somehow or other, you know, it is very dirty. I mean, in a sense that I'll think of it, you know, within this abdomen, actually inside there is actually uh, says there's urine and things. It goes, it moves around. So I, I, but I'm aware of every step, but is it okay to have that kind of meditation where, it, and to maintain within the half hour that I do? Good question. Um, because this answer is useful for everyone. Question is useful also. Um, depends on what you are doing, your, your objective. Your objective will change, okay? Uh, very good at metaphor is if you are a sumo wrestler eating hundreds, I mean, not hundreds, tens of kilograms of meat and lots of eggs, it's good. But if you are a horse jockey, you, you don't want to eat so much. So it depends on what's your aim. Uh, if your aim is to try to have collectedness of mind, you might want to try one object. You don't switch, keep switching object. But if your aim is just to build your awareness, just aware, the mind can be aware of what's happening, then no problem. You can switch 1,000 objects as long as you have awareness. So see which one, which are you trying to sharpen, which area of the mind you're trying to sharpen. Sometimes we need to sharpen the awareness. Um, maybe useful for most of us beginners and advanced people. So you know, awareness, just being aware is important. But at some time, you also might need to have this ability to be with one object. I don't like to use the word concentrate and focus because then you have this idea. You know? It has to be very relaxed, just be with the object. Okay, so it depends. Okay, any other quick questions that regarding meditation so that you, you can continue doing on your own until next session in four? Any other if so no, any other question, brothers and sisters? If no, All right. we'll break. No? All right. So no. Huh? Okay. okay. So thank you very much, Venerable, for such an insightful guided meditation. And I'm sure all the brothers and sisters will be able to practice all the different kinds of awareness now to suit themselves. So brothers and sisters, please remember to cultivate the whole day, even uh, while you're taking your nap later in the afternoon, yeah? As all of us know that meditation has got lots of benefits, not only for realizing the truth. Right, brothers and sisters, let us put our palms together and say sadhu three times uh, to Venerable for such an insightful talk. Right, one, two, three. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Okay, right, before so... I let you go, just let me share the screen for a while, one more time. Just a minute, huh? Can you see my screen? Oh, no, we can't see. No, Sister Peming cannot see. No, it's a minute, I think. Uh, yeah, I think coming up.
you see that? Nothing. No, no. It just says uh, has started share, screen sharing. Sorry for that. and sister before I let you go okay uh, I'd like to inform all of you that uh, this coming 8th of January we're going to have an online course on the nine attributes of Buddha now the nine attributes of the Buddha study group is based on Sayale Shisila book of the same title we're going through the meaning of the Buddha's attributes practitioner will be strengthened their faith by further understanding the Buddha's teaching. Now, the study group will also practice Buddha Nusati meditation together. We're collecting the Buddha's virtue to actually inspire us to do good and help us gain better concentration and be more mindful with our body, speech, and mind. So for more details, uh, you can always uh, uh, contact our chairman, Brother Tisilin, because he will be the facilitator for this particular class. And I've also posted up uh, at the beginning of the chat group, uh, the Google form. So if you're interested, you can fill up the Google form and send it to us. The closing date will be on 31st December, 2021. Right, so brothers and sisters, uh, now is South Pakistan. We will see you back at 4 p.m. And please remember to come back more, all right? Because uh, Bante is really giving up everything today eh, to all of us. So now, please come back. Remember to come back this afternoon, 4 p.m. for awareness of Dharma in daily drama. So have a very fruitful practice today and see you in the afternoon. And also, thank you one more time, Venerable. See you in the afternoon too. Okay. See you. Uh, may I ask permission? Shall we take a group pic, Sister Petlian? Oh, okay. Uh, someone do the group pic. Everybody on your camera, please. We also do, I do the page one. We have total two pages. So allow me to have some time. Look at the camera. Happy Oposata, please smile. Okay, second page, allow me.